This video looks at compensator design using frequency design methods. So what have we discovered so far? In general, the gain and the phase both depend upon frequency. And we've shown how these can be plotted in both diagrams. And we've also introduced the concepts of gain and phase margin. What we want to do now is illustrate how the margins from the open loop bow diagrams have a direct link with the corresponding closed loop behavior. Margins tell us what a good bow diagram looks like, that is one which implies good closed loop behavior. So we can now design systematically by aiming to modify the bow diagram to have the desirable margins. A reminder then, what are the margins? So the gain margin is the multiplicative scaling needed so that the frequency response passes through minus one. And the phase margin is the clockwise phase rotation needed so that the frequency response passes through minus one. So here we're going to focus mainly on the phase margin. And what we need to show you here, as the gain plot increases, the phase margin, shown here with these double-sided arrows, gets worse and as the phase margin gets smaller what do you notice over here on the right hand side we get lower and lower damping more and more oscillation and what we said in the previous video is that generally speaking you want the phase margin to be around 60 degrees and then you're likely to get behavior which is with an acceptable damping Lag compensator design then, using frequency response tools. A lag compensator has got two degrees of freedom. So we can meet two specifications. And the ones we're going to aim for are the desired phase margin, which is analogous to a desired damping ratio, and a desired low frequency gain, which normally is based on a ramp offset criteria. Now you'll notice we have no control of the corresponding speed of response or bandwidth. So here's a lag compensator. It takes this form here where beta is bigger than one. So in other words, the zero is bigger than the pole. And what do you notice? The steady state gain or the low frequency gain of the lag compensator is larger than the high frequency gain. And this factor is beta. And this beta here without worrying about the logs. This is the factor that we want to exploit in the design because this will enable us to choose the low frequency gain of the compensated system. Now the problem we have is that there's a negative phase characteristic and that tends to be damaging to the phase margins. So you'll notice what we do, we make sure the gain crossover frequency is a long way to the right. So if you've got your get it right, your zero somewhere like here and your pole somewhere like here for your compensator, we make sure that those poles and zeros of the compensator are well to the left of the gain crossover frequency. So that phase characteristic does not damage us. Now, if you change the ratio of the pole zero, you're going to get a different steady state gain. So you can see here, we've done a number of compensators with different beta and you'll see the steady state gain increase over the high frequency gain varies, but obviously the size of the phase dip varies as well. Although we are trying to ignore that phase dip by making sure that the gain crossover frequency you can see here is well to the right. So that does not matter. So here's an example of what would happen with a simple lag compensator design. So the original system is in blue and with the original system, this dotted line here shows you where the gain crossover frequency was. And you'll notice it had a very low phase margin. The phase margin here was too small. So the first thing we do is a simple gain design, which here I've noted is 0.3, so 0.3 times G. And that pulls the gain down and it moves the gain crossover frequency to the left. And now we end up with a more acceptable phase margin. So that was covered in the previous video, the simple gain design. Now, what do we do with the lag compensator? The lag compensator allows us to increase the low frequency gain. So can you, if you look up here and see the difference between the red and the yellow, you will see the yellow curve has a higher 
low frequency gain. So what the lag has done is increase the low frequency gain and you'll see here this phase dip well to the left of the crossover frequency. So we're only losing, you need to look quite carefully here, we're only losing a very small amount of the phase margin when we introduce the lag. So what are the mechanistic rules then for lag design? And I must emphasize, these are mechanistic, these are for an introductory course, so that you've got a simple start point. So number one, start with a simple gain design to achieve the desired phase margin. And that's summarized here. So find the frequency where the argument is minus 180 plus your desired phase margin and choose the gain to make sure that becomes the gain crossover frequency. And then what you can do is you can basically get some gain recovery. And you need to ask, how much gain recovery beta do you want? So that's your design parameter. You get to choose beta. And then your lag compensator has k. Now this k is the same k that you got from your simple gain design. And then you see, what do we do? The zero, omega g over 10. So we take the crossover frequency and divide by 10. So push that zero well to the left so any phase doesn't interfere with my phase margin and then for the pole omega g over 10 beta so this is a very simple mechanistic design which you will see is quite effective now a comment here most books suggest you begin from an argument about five degrees more than the desired phase margin because when you add the lag you'll lose a little bit of phase margin but to be honest the original phase margin is somewhat arbitrary anyway, and you might need to do some fine tuning. So whether this is necessary or not is a bit of a mute point. So here we're going to do an example. I'm going to start from this system here. And if you do a simple gain design for a phase margin of 60 degrees, you'll see you need k equals 0.5 and the crossover frequency comes out to about 0.56. We'll show that in a moment. Now, we're going to say we want a ramp error constant of 5. So that's our steady state gain requirement. So if I work out the ramp error constant, assuming I've got the lag compensator included, this is what I get. 1.25 k beta equals 5, k beta equals 4, and that tells me that beta has to be 8. So if I plug those numbers in, you'll see I'm just going to use the formula from the previous slide k times s plus omega g over 10, s plus omega g over 10 beta. So k was 0 0.5, that was up here. And then my crossover frequency was 0 0.56. So you see I put 0 0.56 over 10 and 0 0.56 over 80. So you see it's very mechanistic. You do a simple gain design, work out what beta you need, and everything else follows. So now let's see if we can do that with our simple system. So here... I've entered the system and you can see the current phase margin is 45. It's not quite good enough. So first we're going to try and get that to 60 degrees. So let's pull this down a bit till we get close to 60 degrees. That's not far off. And now let's just get the compensator back up. Now we'll use 0.5 because that's what's in the, um, in the notes. See, it doesn't give us exactly 60 degrees, but it's pretty close and it gives us simple numbers. And you can see the crossover frequency is about 0.56. Again, it's really not worth dealing with decimal places. So what I'm going to do now is add, sorry, where do I do it? Add a lag. So if I go here, lag, and basically it wants me to put in the pole and the zero, okay? So we said that the zero was going to be 0 0.056 and we said the pole was going to be 0 0.007. Now you do have to be careful here with CISO tool because if you look carefully you'll see it's gone and corrupted my gain and we said that gain here had to be 0 0.5 so let's put that 0 0.5 in. So always check up here make sure the compensator in CISO tool is the one you expect and so now you'll see I've got what I expected my phase margin over here, 55, I've lost about 5 degrees, which is what I expected with the lag. And this phase dip, you can see, is about a decade to the left of where I'm calculating my phase margin. So it's got the pattern that I'm expecting.
So there's the same plots there. And you'll notice if you look on the before and after, what has the lag done? It's recovered some low frequency gain, which is exactly what you wanted it to do. Lead compensator design then, using frequency response tools. So again, a lead has two degrees of freedom, so we can meet two specifications. And what we're going to aim for now is a desired phase margin, again equivalent to an expected damping, and speed of response or bandwidth. And as a consequence, we have no control over the corresponding low frequency gain. So what does a lead compensator look like? You'll see it's very similar to a lag, but the main difference is now the pole is large and the zero is small. And so when you look at the frequency response, you can see now we have a low gain at low frequency compared to high frequency. But interestingly, we're going to ignore this attribute. So it's the opposite of the lag. With the lag, the gain attribute was the one we wanted. With the lead, it's the one we ignore. With the lag, we try to ignore the phase characteristic. With the lead, the phase characteristic is the one we want to exploit. This phase here, this large positive phase, is something useful because it allows us to increase the phase margin by rotating in the correct direction. So we're essentially going to exploit that phase characteristic. And you'll notice we want the maximum phase to correspond with the crossover frequency. So we get the maximum phase rotation where we're calculating the phase margin. So what are the design principles? We deliberately modify the phase plot near the critical point. And so we ask ourselves, what phase rotation do we want? And here's a key thing, at the desired gain crossover frequency. There's a key point there. You have to decide what gain crossover frequency you would like. And here's another key point. So the corner frequencies are chosen to bridge the desired gain crossover frequency. So first, choose your desired gain crossover frequency. And then you see the pole and the zeros are equidistant. That's on a log plot either side. And the final step is we need to make sure that omega g becomes the gain crossover frequency. And you do that by making sure that modulus of gk is 1 at that frequency. So key points, you've got to choose your desired gain crossover frequency, and that will approximately become your closed loop bandwidth. Now, some key notes. At what frequency do you get this maximum phase? So what we've said, we have this phase characteristic here, and we're most interested in this point here. And so you're asking yourself, what is that frequency? Well, you can show that it's the geometric mean of the pole and the zero. So multiply the pole and zero together, take the square root, and that's where that characteristic will appear. You can find out how big that peak is with this formula here. I'm not going to do the derivation because this is meant to be a rapid video. And you can tabulate it if you want. You can see for different betas down here, you can find how big the phase characteristic is. And that's quite useful because if you know you need about 40 degrees, phase rotation, you know you need beta between 4 and 6. Now, typically, in a design, you know the phase rotation that you want. And you're asking yourself, what beta do I need? Well, there's a nice formula down here, you can see, that you can find that beta using this formula here. So again, I'm not going to derive that slowly here. And you can pause the video, look at this in slower time, and go through it. Now, how am I going to actually construct my lead in practice? So we note that the peak phase occurs at the geometric mean of the pole and zero. And this will be chosen to be at the gain crossover frequency. So we can define the lead in terms of the desired crossover frequency and the ratio beta as follows. You see, what I do is I put as the zero omega divided by the square root of beta, and as the pole omega times the square root of beta, because clearly the geometric mean of those two is now omega. So a very, very easy way of getting your pole and your zero in the right place. Now, we need to enforce that omega to be the gain crossover frequency. In other words, we have to make sure we satisfy this formula. The modulus of gk is 1 at that frequency, and therefore you can find a formula for k. It has to be root beta 
over the modulus of g of j omega. So again, you'll see a very simple mechanistic design. So choose the desired gain crossover frequency. And typically, this is going to be faster than that used by the lag. Otherwise, what are you doing? You're wasting your time. Find the required phase rotation phi. From that, find the required beta using this formula. And then simply plug all your values into this formula down here. So let's look at this with the same example we used with the lag. Okay, and you remember with the lag, the crossover frequency was 0.56. So we're going to aim for a faster crossover frequency because this is a lead and that's what we can do. So I'm going to go for 1.9 radians per second. That is a bit arbitrary, but it's so we can illustrate the benefits. Now with a gain crossover frequency of 1.9, if I just scale G to get the corresponding gain crossover frequency, what you find is you end up with a phase margin of 21 degrees. So now, if I want the phase margin to be 60, I need a phase rotation of 39 degrees. So I need to add 39 to that 21, and I will get 60. So that means my beta has to be 7.29. And now all I do is plug those values into my formula. You see the formula from over the page, this formula here. And again, I'll let you do that in slower time. But if you plug the values in, you'll find out that the lead comes out like this. So what we'll do is we'll just show that now on the CISO tool so that you can see. So what I'm going to do is first of all store this lag design and you'll see it's now called Des Design 2. So we've stored that. And now what I'm going to do is go back to my compensator editor and I'm going to change this to the lead. So what we said is the zero was going to be minus 0.91. Oh, I had two minuses there, that's not good. The pole, oops, do this right, was going to be minus 3.98, and the corresponding gain was 6.08. Okay, and you'll see now, exactly as expected, the phase margin is pretty much 60 degrees. I didn't, I wasn't pedantic about the decimal places, that's why it's not exactly 60. But you can see you've got the desired phase margin and the desired crossover frequency, which was 1.9. So again, let me store that one. And now what I can do is I can compare my lead, my lag. Okay, and there we go. And you can see the difference between the lag compensator and the lead compensator. The lead compensator in red and the lag compensator in blue. And if you look at the responses, what do you notice? The lead compensator is much, much faster than you get from the lag compensator. Okay, so um, what's the lead done? It's allowed you to get a much bigger bandwidth. And you can see that from this red plot here. Okay. So that's just to reiterate. Now, finally, let's look at lead lag compensation. So the lag compensator didn't give us any control over bandwidth. And the lead compensator didn't give us any control over low frequency gain. That's because both of them only had two degrees of freedom. But what if we combine lead and lag, if we use them both together? We've now got three degrees of freedom. So that means we can meet three specifications. So we can try and get a desired phase margin, a desired speed of response or bandwidth, and a desired low frequency gain. So how might we be systematic about doing lead lag? So the lag compensator increases low frequency gain, but cannot help with bandwidth. And the lead helps with bandwidth, but sacrifices low frequency gain. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna use the lead to meet the phase margin and the bandwidth requirements. So we're going to start with the lead design. Now, you can see again, I've emphasized, you could start with a phase margin about five degrees above what you think you want, because you know the lag's going to lose this, but that's, that's up to you. Having done the lead design, you then introduce the lag in order to regain the desired amount of low frequency gain. So if you're doing lead lag, start with a lead using the mechanistic lead design, and then do a mechanistic lag design. 
So we'll do it on the same example as before and you'll see how it works. So we start with our lead design, same criteria. So aim for a phase margin of 60 um, with a crossover frequency of 1.9. Okay, so we've already done that. So there's the lead design that we did in the previous step. So that's step one. Now, this has got a poor low frequency gain. So if you calculate the low frequency gain constant, this KV, you'll see it's 1.73. So if we wanted that to be something like 5, so you'll see what I've said here is I'd like that KV to be about 5, then we need to increase the gain by a ratio of about 3. Again, you'll see I'm not being pedantic about decimal places, so I can now use my mechanistic lag design. You see I put in the crossover frequency, which is 1.9, I divide by 10 to keep it a decade away, and then for the pole, 1.9 divided by 10 times 3. So, all I need to do now is go to CISO tool and add this lag compensator to what I had before. So let's just try that, see if we can manage it. So what I'm going to do, get the compensator ready up, and basically I've got to add a lag. Okay. So the lag was going to be minus 0.19. Oops, got too many decimal places there. And and then the pole was going to be 0 0.0633. Okay. Now the gain has gone wrong, but if you remember the gain from previously, it was 6.08. That was the gain from the lead. Let's put that back in. And, oh, I do apologise, I have managed to change the, uh, I, need, I need to put these ones back in, these ones are wrong, I do apologise. So what values did we have? Um, 0.91. You can see how using CISO tool is very nice because you can immediately see when you've made a mistake because you looked at the plot and you said something's not right with that plot so I've made a mistake I've not put the right numbers in now that's better so now if you look at this compensator you'll see I've got my original lead over here on the right and I've added my lag a bit on the left and the gain for my lead over here so you can see the numbers check you've got the right numbers look at the plot and you can see, yes, I've lost about five degrees of phase margin. That's what I expected. My crossover frequency is still about right. And you can see this characteristic dip from the lag component. OK, and now you'll see it's added this new plot um, over here. But what you won't see is obviously I've now improved the low frequency gain. So some conclusions. We've introduced the concept of frequency response design using margins. You can easily select a gain to achieve a desired phase margin, and we did that on the previous video. Lag compensation can improve the gain design by specifying low frequency gain as well as phase margin, so two criteria, but we can't do bandwidth. Lead compensation can improve on the gain design by specifying the bandwidth as well as the phase margin, but you can't control the low frequency gain. Lead lag compensation combines the useful attributes of both lag and lead, so you can now specify phase margin, bandwidth and low frequency gain. Obviously, within limits, there's only so many values you can achieve.